back on that pony one day, finish that degree out, but I'm certainly there committing. You. There's that lady again. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Crow and Kevin at Shortbox. I'm the head of community marketing at Shortbox, and Kevin is the, Kevin, what is your official title? I am the business development guy. Biz I don't development know if that's guy. the official term. Yeah, I, I help our new accounts get started, help people with pain points, essentially just help grow the network of awesome sellers and buyers that use our platform. Cool. And everybody is super into that. But now let's get to the reason why we're here. And that's because we're interviewing Eisner Award winning. I just screamed into the I just screamed into my wow. mic. Eisner <laughs> Award winning uh, writer and artist Christian Ward. Uh, I can introduce you, Christian, but why don't you tell us some of the stuff that you worked on in case somebody hasn't read your um, stuff before? I have worked on, I'm primarily known for my cosmic space stuff, I would say. I'm yeah. a cosmic space guy. Yeah. So a lot of people know me from Odyssey, uh, Black Bolt, which I did with Marvel, uh, and probably my most, hey, hey, and then my uh, my most recent uh, book, uh, my my before that, uh, with Invisible Kingdom with uh, G. Willow Wilson, mm. and then most recently I'm doing uh, a blood Oh yeah. <laughs> Which is not a cosmic book. No, I mean, it it's, could. It's what if it turns into it someday? Well, <laughs> I can't tell. It. I, well, I know where it's going. <laughs> well, perfect. Um, so, anyways, we we got Christian today. Think, you know, we we got this. We got a bunch of. We get all the books from Image at uh, Short Box, and so we got a box the other. Um, uh, I guess it was like a couple of weeks ago, and there was like thirty variant covers of Bloodstained Teeth, and I'm like, oh my wow. god, it's another Christian yeah. Word book. Um, I personally was introduced to your work um, in the same breath as like Mobius and J.H. Williams III, who we've interviewed, which was great. Um, and then my my comic book guy, my <laughs> comic book shop pulls up Odyssey and is like, have you heard of this? And I'm like, no, but it looked so cool. I've never seen, it. When, you, when, you're, when you're kind of presented in those like, with those other like cosmic characters. I mean, like when you think of like cosmic art, I think of, well, one Jack Kirby, of course. You think of J.H. Williams and his incredible spreads. And then I also think, because I, I'm a neon, I'm a neon kind of guy. I don't know what the fuck that means. I'm a, <laughs> so neon, I love these colors. <laughs> and when I saw Odyssey, you know, I, I just saw all the bright colors. I wish I had my, my books in my, the office right now. I was like, whoa, that, I've never seen anything like that. Cause that's right when I got back into comics. And I was amazed by it. It's your work. Well, thank you. Oh, what I do. <laughs> I do. So you mentioned you're, you're sort of a... colorblind. I can't see it. Are you? <laughs> oh, that'd be incredible. <laughs> no, no, I can totally have gone with that, yeah. <laughs> I'd be combining I... Robert Patterson of comic interviews and just make shit, shit up. And then in years to come, you'd be like, so you're colorblind? I'm like, oh, yes, I am. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> I mean, I suppose I could be. I, don't, I can't see for anyone else's eyes. I, I really, it's if true. you're colorblind, man, I want that colorblindness. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't seem real to live in. It would just be like neon yeah. everywhere, like Miami 1984 yeah. or Tokyo at any given time. Yeah. <laughs> just like a permanent acid trip, you know? Um, all right. So let's, let's jump into the questions. I, I think that uh, uh, just in case you haven't figured it out from our, uh, I guess suboptimal banter from the short box side. Um, uh, one of the things that you're known for in your art is, is sort of the, the, in, the incredible spreads, the, the colors. Um, uh, this obviously came from somewhere, right? You, this is a style you've developed over time. Can you like take us through like how you really developed your own visual style, you, you know, your influences, that kind of thing? Um, yeah, I mean, I can. It, it's, but it, I would say it's summed up with one word. And it's, mm. that's insecurity, genuinely insecurity. You know, I, I kind of, um, I'm not the greatest drawer. Like I can draw uh, and I, I enjoy drawing and I have a kind of style to my drawing. But, um, you know, when I can kind of compare myself on that level to a lot of the kind of, not necessarily my favorite artists, but like the big artists of the time, um, at any given time, I'm like, well, I can't draw as well as these guys or these girls or, it's just I don't have that draftsmanship. It's not really what my stuff's about. My stuff's about story. Like I get very obsessed with like storytelling, the drama, the, the kind of the acting. That's what I really get into. The drawing, I'm okay at. Mm -hmm. um, and so really it was just a case of when I did my first book, which I never name. I'm not going to name because I hate it. 
and I didn't really like the guy for work. <laughs> um, so um, I, I, I just whoa. <laughs> um, so when I um, when I um, when I did it, I just basically threw all everything at the, at the kitchen sink at it. Do you know what I mean? It was just like mm-hmm. color, color, color. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm a big believer. I used to be an art teacher and I was an art teacher. I was the head of my department for 10 years. So I kind of, you know, you know, I, I used to teach kids art and I, I was a big um, believer in the color cells, not just mm. on a kind of commercial basis, but it sells an image. Oh, you know, yeah. you don't have to be the, the best drawer that, it, it, you know, and I would teach my pupils that, you know, if you use strong colours and use your strong colours confidently, and that is something that can be learned, mm-hmm. you can it's like a fake it till you make it sort of thing. Yeah. So really, I was just applying that same notion to my own work. You know, I I, I had a sense that I, I could bring a, a, a kind of a palette of colour mm-hmm. that didn't really exist in comics, you know. Yeah. Um, and I knew that that was my my kind of like my niche in. And, you know, type, sort of combining that with like kind of more design elements that I was really into because I kind of trained as an illustrator. Mm. So I was bringing in kind of like, you know, contemporary graphics, contemporary graphic design, contemporary illustration. You know, I also did a bit of fine art, so I was throwing that in as well. So it was, it was, it was, I was, also, I knew I could kind of, kind of get a grip in comics if I well, just was completely different, which of course could have completely backfired and, yeah. People might not have resonated with it, but it's a big. And again, I used to say this to my students: you you can't really be somebody else. You can only really be you. And sometimes you just have to be you longer before that's successful. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it isn't. But there's yeah. no point trying to be someone else because, you know, any art, whether it be in any field, people respond to truth. That sounds really kind of pretentious, but it's true. You know, yeah. and if you're trying to do something that isn't you or doesn't come from you because you're kind of copying this artist over here that you really mm-hmm. like and this artist over there that you really like, I mean, and of course you have inspirations, I have inspirations, that's a different thing. But if you're m- trying to mimic a style or a way of working or a way of colouring or a way of drawing, it, it's just going to land flat might carry you for a bit because you'll be the cheap version of that person mm-hmm. right. but it's not gonna it's not gonna create a kind of lasting career and it's not yeah. really gonna kind of be soulful and, and connect with people so the color was really just to kind of compensate for what i saw as a lack of drawing and so insecurity wow that's pretty there incredible it's weird when you see something like uh, w- when you see somebody that does something where you're like, I can't believe that person can do that. And then you hear that it's insecurity that, you know, it's, pr- it's, it's pretty inspiring because like, you know, if you're, if you're insecure and you're producing stuff that I, that I literally just compared to Jack Kirby, which, you know, which is, you know, how, how, you know, somebody who might be beyond compare, but I don't think so. Um, that, that's crazy to hear. It's crazy to hear. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, we're just normal men. <laughs> yeah, and just and you amazing. you use a you use a combination of uh, multiple media's right when you're doing your art, so a bit of um, drawing, a bit of or are you mostly digital. To, these I, days? I, no, I used to like when I started with like the first the first few comics, the one I'm not going to mention, uh, and and in, and in front of it, everyone's going to be like, "Who's he talking about?" Um, uh, I'll tell you, after, I'll tell you off camera. Um, <laughs> okay, it, uh, no, it gets, to be honest. Uh, uh, infinite vacation. Um, and and the one before that shall not be named um, was done traditionally, and then I would scan that in, and then color. And so it was a little bit. There was a little bit of wall colors in there as well. Yeah. But um, when I did, and then the first arc of Odyssey was done that way. But it was just, um, it was, it was taking me so long. Yeah, to kind of do to do because the drawing was the weak element, so that was I was mm. laboring over that, but, and then I would scan it in, and then that whole, whole like kind of trying. I didn't like I didn't like ink, yeah. so I was doing the kind of Frank Whiteley pencils, and then using digital kind of like Photoshop to get the levels yeah. up, so it became like a line. Mm-hmm. But when you do it that way, your lines got to be really clean because always yeah. you get all the the gunk. Right. And I was getting a lot of the gunk, and it was it was pulling. Well, what I was seeing in my head, I was like, I wasn't quite getting 
the clarity and the cleanness and I suppose the professionalism that I really wanted. Um, so I, in between arcs, between arc one of Odyssey and arc two, I kind of very quickly, I mean, I literally didn't know anything on the job, went to digital straight away. Yeah. Like, okay, just straight into digital. So like the, the first digital page I did was like page one of issue six of Odyssey. Yeah. And just was learning as I was going. Um, but I just fell in love with it. One of them was just gone. They've gone. Um, you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, you good. sound uh, much more regal now because of the echo. Yeah. 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 Um, so I was, um, I went straight to sort of digital and learned on the job. As you know, when you work in comics and your book's coming out every month. Yeah. So I mean, that, that can kind of be a bit of a blessing, that pressure. Mm-hmm. You can't really get in your head too much and you have to just be like, to follow the story, just stay true to the story and just keep going. But it, it just, I fell in love with working digitally because it allowed me to incorporate what we're talking about, the colours, the line and all the digital and design elements and the kind of fine art elements became one rather than necessarily, there's my line, there's yeah. my colour, there's my fancy stuff. It was all like one. And like when right. I work there's no you know editors when editors work with me now they have to I think they have to kind of adjust to how I work compared to like kind of a more traditional artist mm-hmm. and I don't think I'm on my own here because I think that you know there are people that work like I do I'm not like a, such a singular kind of way of working but I will do sometimes I'll paint a background first before I even draw the character and then, and then almost like an animation lay the characters on sometimes I feel like I want to paint a character without any lines. Yeah. So I'll just paint the character. Um, and other times I'll, I'll draw the character. And it, that's kind of, again, finding what, what's right in the story and, and what moment is this? Is this a soft moment? Should this moment feel a little bit more experimental? You're mm-hmm. almost like a cinematographer. I'm looking yeah. at what am I kind of like trying to achieve with this panel or this page or this splash or whatever? So it's definitely always following the story and uh, and going that way. But yes, to circle back, originally pencils and then digital, but now yeah. since the second arc of Odyssey, all digital. Well, that's that's one of the things I love about your art is that it's so consistent and amazing, but it, it feels experimental constantly. It feels mm-hmm. like you're always pushing against the edges of what makes you comfortable or that the way the story is being told and the, the narration. And... Um, I, I mean, I've, being a fan of yours since, you know, uh, Infinite Vacation on, um, I've seen I've seen the development of your style and it's really it's really come to a head in, in some of the stuff. I mean, we should mention specifically the Eisners that you won um, mm-hmm. because they are relevant in this case. I see them up there in the corner. Oh, wow. I didn't um, get into a clock. Then. That's cool. So so you you took home the Eisner for the best artist and painter for Black Bolt yeah. and then the best no, new series. No. Best new series for Black Bolt, and then the best oh. painter artist for Invisible Kingdom, Invisible Kingdom. Invisible Kingdom. and the best, and the best. I knew, uh, I knew one of those was both of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, you have yeah, notes I mean, in front of you. you <laughs> I know. <laughs> My notes are so slim and pencil written. <laughs> you know, we, if you make them. the if you make the lines clear, then you 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 leave out all the gunk. I think we just learned yeah. that. So <laughs> it's good to know. Got we don't got, got it. Got it. Get rid of the um, gunk. But I mean, it's also it's also evident just in like the the prolific amount of stuff you're putting out these mm-hmm. days. There's so many variant covers that are Christian Ward covers. And when I managed a comic shop, people I'm just so tired. You know, they wouldn't even be reading. Really the tired. <laughs> yeah, the covers yeah. are awesome. You can imagine. always pick one out of a lineup. I, I remember your yeah. cover for uh, Chew, and I was like, I know what that is. That's a Christian Ward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was sick. everyone knows a Christian Ward cover or, or art. I mean, it's iconic. It's you know, real similar to like when we talked to J.H. Uh, Williams, where, mm-hmm. you know, I get people that would come into the comic shop and show me Batwoman Elegy and say, I want something that looks like this. And there's nothing. There's no one that I can point to that would give you the same experience and satisfaction as reading a J.H. Williams book. Yeah. Very similarly with Christian Ward's stuff. Same conversation. You know, we can we can point around like, sure, like Alexis Zirit does really bright colors. Mm-hmm. This other person does really cool like spacescapes. But the marriage of all those factors is really something people are enjoying and, and want. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank I mean, you. Here, I'll, I'll tell you a really cool story. When I was uh, managing Cape and Cowell in Oakland, 
we had a uh, friend him for Vic, for Vault Comics mm -hmm. came out and we were looking to do an exclusive and they said, well, we have this like unclaimed Christian Ward one. And we were like, without even seeing it, uh, we were like, yeah, send it over. So they sent it to us and we were like, can you put our, our logo on the dude's shirt? And we, we got a Christian Ward variant and it took <laughs> like the decision process took, I mean, it was like yeah. that. Yeah. Calling it a process is probably a little, a little overselling what it, uh, what it was. It was an impulse. <laughs> yeah. Is yeah, it weird? Impulse. Is it more of a knee jerk reaction? <laughs> is it weird, uh, Christian, to like have us talk about you in a third person to you? I like it. <laughs> I can warn you to be like this, where I just sit here and you just sort of like, and I'm like, hey. Yeah. Ooh, like that's that. me. Hey, <laughs> I did that. Jeez, that's the eyes. Listen to other people sound me. Feels lovely. I like it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not shy of retiring. I will sit here all day while you rape about me, and I love every minute. Love it. <laughs> love it. Yeah. Um, uh, going back to what we were talking about with the uh, knowing what art is right for the page and the mood. I think in a recent interview, uh, uh, like probably the one I just watched right before this, um, you mentioned that when you were developing Bloodstained Teeth, you you were like you had this kind of tension of like I want to draw it or you know, maybe I want to write it and draw it, but then you're like, well, maybe my art isn't right for the story. Can you kind of dig into that a little bit more? Or did no, I just ruin I mean, the like, entire um, anecdote? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to have to make some of it up. So, um, yeah, no, I mean, basically, I mean, this, this goes back to give you a little bit of a spin, a different spin on the answer. It goes back to Machine Gun Wizards that mm -hmm. I did with Sammy Cavella. Uh, Dark Horse, which was, be, you know, the before times, as I had to call them. Yeah. And, um, like, my long-suffering wife, Catherine, will tell you that, I, like, almost every week I will go downstairs or you know, we'll be sort of lying in bed and I'll be like, I've got a really great idea for a story. Mm -hmm. And she will have to listen to me telling her a story. You know, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. And I'm going to do this. And, like, and, she, and she always says the same thing, really, really good. And I kind of became aware the more, and I would do it all the time. And I noticed that her attention span of these stories would drop. <laughs> yeah, and I realized, and I, and I kind of suddenly had this self awareness that I was just like, I'm that guy. And, we, we, and we've, all, we've all been that guy at some point, and we've all got friends who are still that guy. And they have the best ideas, and they have the best, and they're like, I'm going to be a writer, or I'm going to be a filmmaker, I'm going to be this, I'm gonna, and I'm going to do it this way. And you're like, oh, that's a great idea. And then they come back six months later, and, and they're still giving you great ideas. And we get stuck in this loop of everyday life. It takes over. If we've got family, if we've got jobs, you know, you've got to find yourself you know, a, um, you know, a little chunk of time. I mean, it's why I really like um, see Robert Cargill and his Twitter feed. You know, he's so great, uh, like kind of trying to inspire people and sort of be like, you only need 10 minutes a day and it can change your life. And I believe that. Cool. And it was this real kind of like penny drop moment where I realised I'm never going to be what I want to be. And ever since getting into comics, like I never had an ambition to draw comics per se, I had an ambition to, to do my comics. Mm -hmm. And I got kind of got sidetracked because you don't say no to Matt Fraction. Do you know what right. I mean? And you yeah. don't say no to G. Willow Wilson and you don't say no to Jason Owen. You know, yeah. they, these are kind of amazing people that yeah. you just, you collaborate with. Um, and I realized that that was always gonna be something I'd want to do, even now, as, now that I do write because there's a magic that comes out when two creative minds connect, they kind of create something that you couldn't have done on your own. Totally. Um, but I, I realized that I couldn't afford to wait for that because I'm very privileged and very lucky that I've always got offers touch wood. Um, and I knew that if I waited for me as an artist, it's never gonna happen because I'm not gonna choose me as a writer over someone who's experienced, and let's be completely, you know, tr transparent, more popular than me as a writer. Sure. Um, and uh, I've got my coffee's just turned up. Thank you. <laughs> Magic the, coffee. The long-suffering <laughs> wife we've heard so much about. It was the long-suffering <laughs> wife. She's, she's waving at the door. Um, yeah. Um, she, yeah. So I knew. Um, I knew that I basically, I had to make a leap. And I never kind of envisaged writing for another artist. 
and again, I suppose that comes from that to insecurity because she's like, am I good enough? Yeah. But I had this idea, this, this going back to that, this machine gun wizards, that would it just, that had never left me. And I was going to draw that. And although the kind of, for anyone who doesn't know, Machine Gun Wizards was, was about the prohibition in the 1930s, Al Capone, Elliot Ness, but it's not alcohol, it's magic. So it's this <laughs> clash of these two things. Uh, and I realised as much as I could handle the magic, that maybe the kind of the, the period elements yeah. wouldn't, I mean, I, I, I knew I'd get bored drawing buildings, real buildings. I knew I'd get bored drawing <clears throat> the cars. It's just not my bag. Yeah. Um, so I got talking to kind of Sammy Cavalli, who had just done Abbott, which was another period thing. So with good. Um, Ben Saladin, which was great. Yeah. Um, and uh, we hit it off. He loved the idea. I mean, it was the quick, I mean, I felt like a fraud in a way because I'd never written anything at that point. Yeah. A few shorts. And I sent it to um, an editor, uh, Daniel Champon. 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 I've never said his name. It's a weird how you say sometimes when you say someone's name. I don't know. <laughs> how do I pronounce it? So I, don't. I, pr- I pronounced Daniel Mark Champon. Mark Miller, Mark Millar for like Malar. 20 years. Yeah, because it's got the A at the end. I was like, that's how you say it, Mark Millar. I'm sure be fine with it. Um, he's just crying to his money. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's right. And so, and yeah, and it got it got greenlit really quick, and it was really thrilling. And then we, you know, we did it, we did that, and it, but it, and it gave me the taste, and it also taught me a lesson, which I've obviously I've, I've now applied to Buzz Dame Teeth, mm-hmm. that, you know, we went, we talked at the beginning of this about me being the cosmic guy, and there were other things I think I can do and I want to do. Um, but it's known that that there are parameters to my style. And although I can kind of step out of that and that can be quite interesting, mm-hmm. really it's kind of, I'm at full power and full strength within those parameters. Mm-hmm. And um, and the initial idea of, of Bloodstained Teeth was really centred on Attica Sloan. So for anyone who doesn't know, it, it's basically about billionaire vampires that rule the world secretly. And it kind of supposes because like you know you think about world building you think about well if this was real how would it work and it kind of occurred to me that well they'd get blood easily they just use blood banks yeah. and if they're immortal well, what does that mean how do they pay for their lifestyles if those lifestyles go on and on and on and uh i thought if they're billionaires they're going to be taking a little bit of all of us and we're their little ants that go around and earn for them and yeah. they're kind of draining our capital resources and they don't really care about us we're clogs in the machine we're cattle and uh when that kind of fell into my head and kind of connected with this the other central idea which was this vampire for hire which is that yeah. slow he will bite you and turn you into a vampire for money because that's how he makes his living within immortality right. when i realized right. it connected to that kind of real world idea of billionaires because i fucking hate billionaires mm-hmm. who doesn't um <laughs> you know it's like fuck you I, I, can't, I can't tell from the motifs running through all of your books like invisible <laughs> empire yeah. <laughs> vacation, yeah. Blood, yeah. 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 it's oh. like a little man these aren't these aren't love history. letters to billionaires yeah uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just you know when I realized I had to kind of you know really kind of reflect our world uh and and you know have a bit of a kind of dig and have a little kind of I mean it's also about and as you you know as people read it's also a bit of a love letter towards kind of like a health service and how important that is um it's not all negative there's some there's a love letter in there as well um but I realized that it needed to be somebody that could sell the reality and yeah. it needed to be as close to our reality to really sell that, mm. uh, you know, so that people would 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 buy it. And uh, that's when I got to chat to to Patrick, Patrick Reynolds, who's my amazing kind of collaborator on this. And um, yeah, um, I got some nudie pictures of him. I hired a private eye. He didn't see it come in, and then there was like butter involved, and like these. I don't want yeah. to call on it. Yeah. And he had yeah. them all over. 
bonus content Ooh. for the hardcover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've That's got right. it. I've got those snaps. He has to do what I want him to do. Uh, he's <laughs> Who's the vampire here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's about <laughs> um, yeah. So, but like, luckily, he. Uh, I, 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 I didn't need to use photographs or any blackmail. He, um, he said yes immediately. I mean, it turned out he was like a big vampire fan. Like, yeah. um, I mean, I think kind of like one of the reasons why I approached him. I think he had, um, because he does a lot of really cool commissions. I want to see him, and he he does very kind of cinematic stuff. And I think one mm-hmm. of them was, I want to say, um, um. What's the guy's name from Lost Boys? Daniel, that the, the key for Sutherland plays. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Daniel. Yeah. he's got the he's got yeah. the, the white hair. Yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. No, a yeah. little um, little earring. So anyway, so I was like, this is the guy, uh, and luckily he he kind of really dug in, and he and he just finished the project, so he was in between projects, so I was able to kind of swoop in, and it was just kind of kismet. It just, cool. it, you know, yeah. You know, it was kind of like working yeah and uh yeah and i knew he was the man for the job really and kind of got him on board and then it was a case of bringing in the rest of the team and like kind of creating you know what i wanted it to i had a quite clear vision of you know because i think when you're kind of like a writer it, it you you've got like a kind of vision of of what it could be and, mm-hmm. and you know, and being an artist, I could kind of see what it could look like. So it was about yeah. putting. And I, we we approached well, I approached um, Heaven Moore, who's our colorist, who's just. I mean, look at that. She's the incredible. colors are great. I mean, she's amazing. Yeah. Just you know, amazing. It's that you know. It's really interesting. Is like. You can really tell the realism here, right? It's, like, it's sort of photorealistic yeah. where you got the real shadows here, but then you it's it's sort of like complemented by these colors. And so you get sort of a neon yeah. noir thing, like um yeah. yeah, yeah, like a modern blade runner y. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is the thing, right? So, like, you know, art is all about tension. And I'm not just talking about comics, I'm talking about mm. art. It's about tension. And it's about two things coming together or three things or whatever coming together. And it's the tension that we enjoy. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at any great piece of art. Now, that tension could be light and dark. You know, it could be one a cool colour, warm colour. It could be kind of a smooth texture, a rough texture. It could be kind of abstract and realistic. And that's what we're doing. You know, and it's that it's that tension between it. And I, you know, when I look to all the, I mean, Patrick's work with the best colorist i mean like dave stewart you know lee um uh, long is it longridge um he loved he's worked with a plus colorists but they all approached his work in a way that kind of just fed into the realism you know they were all like kind of like were aiming for like enhancing his realism yeah. even more and i was like you don't need that <laughs> he, he you've got the foundation of his realism it can take really wild colors. And because yeah. it's so good and so realistic and so well observed, you can go crazy with those colors. Yes. And it's still realistic, you know, and that's the joy of it. Uh, and I remember, like, I gave her, I mean, I didn't give her any notes on like what I specifically wanted because, of that. you know, it was, it was important that it was hers. Right. And um, all I said to her was, I just want, wild i don't I, I said i don't want to see anything that i've seen before i mean christ i mean it was such a challenge i mean i don't even and she sent us the pages and like my jaw just hit the desk yeah what, a, what a tall order from christian ward i want you to give me something i've never seen <laughs> yeah what is <laughs> well she said that afterwards we because we know we hadn't met we just kind yeah. of like um um we just kind of like chatted a little bit mm-hmm. and um and then we kind of thought we did an interview together a little bit like this and i felt like we should kind of talk the three of us together before to sort of break the ice and uh we um she um we got on the skype call on a zoom call and uh she kind of confessed that a big part of it was just like how do i out wild me yeah, yeah. which yeah. I didn't even occur to me I, like i wasn't even didn't right. even 
Well, it wasn't in my kind of remit. It would be um, like Jackson Pollock being like, hey, I need to see more splatters. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. But do you know what's really interesting? I'll tell you what's really interesting. So so issue four, mm -hmm. we, we're doing kind of like quite a cool little issue. It's just been solicited so I can talk about it. So Atticus gets stuck. He gets imprisoned in a mine, in a memory palace oh, of ooh. a vampire who ooh. feeds on memory. So cool. he's trapped in this vampire's mind and this vampire is eating his memories. And I'm basically using it as a, as a kind of mechanic to, to explore Atticus mm -hmm. and, and some of the characters yeah. connected. So, you know, I'm using it as a, like, there are things you, I want you to know, but I'm doing it within this kind of confine of this thing. So yeah. each issue, you after issue one is kind of like a self-contained story. Interesting. Oh, cool. Okay. And, and we'll go, and then each one will be its own story with like the, the big thread kind of going through. Sometimes that thread's more obvious and sometimes it's less obvious than the, mm. the main stories, the thing. Yeah. So hopefully each issue will, you know, if you pick one issue up and you're like, I'm not too sure on that, just get the next one and you might love it again because it'll be a slightly different, it's almost like a different genre each issue. Anyway, oh, wow. that's the point. So this one issue, he's trapped in this um, this vampire's mind, and it's like a trip. And so yeah. it occurred to us that it would be really cool to kind of distinguish between the reality and the dream. Well, I'll, I'll draw it. Oh, oh, no, oh cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm drawing it, um, and and then it suddenly occurred to me, oh shit. How do I color the dream sequence and make it wilder than the reality? <laughs> yeah. And so I've just basically shot myself in the foot. So now I'm like, what the <laughs> hell am I doing? It's just nothing but double page just, spreads. Just double oh, page spreads the whole issue. Well, if there's, <laughs> it's finished. I've already done it. It's oh, okay. um, how many page spreads have I done? Well, only two. Huh. No, only one. Oh. Yeah, only as long one. as I got one, I'm fine. Well, you're going to be disappointed. In, no, you, no, you won't be disappointed with one. Because it's, uh, it's completely black. <laughs> it's completely what? It's completely, completely black. black. Oh, well, great. Oh. But I can't really say. I can't really say what. There is something on it. I can't really say what. I don't want to give anything away. But it's 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 storytelling, right? I'm just like, if I love the story. that. Uh, but there's, there's, there's some what. I, I've managed to, I managed to put some wild stuff in there. Um, yeah. It's trippy. Um, so but yeah, so that's yeah. Fun. But I, I've had to like really go to town, like really go to town, and gone. Okay, let's just take the safety off and just really go for it. Um, yeah. and, and the other thing is, what's been really cool is um, I've kind of found a new in experimenting with what I wanted to do. And again, I can't say too much because I don't want to give any plot away. I, I've tried a kind of different technique. That I've never done before hmm. um, and it, it really worked beautifully and I actually took I've now taken that technique and applied it on my day job which is Aquaman Andromeda and it's worked oh, perfectly cool. I've like I've like kind of been doing these pages in the evening just to kind of like and it's been fun because it's my gig it's my book it's a labor of love uh, and just having lots of fun on them and it's like I've discovered this this new technique, this new way of them, which I've then applied to, you know, Aquaman. So it's all it all feeds, you know, feeds yeah. each other. You know, I think that's the way you've got to. You've just you can't stay in one place. You've just got to keep trying things and just having fun. Um, yeah, so it's interesting. That's you know that's something I get from your art, man. Is that is the joy you really you really love what you're doing. I like yeah. that you have so much fun, kind of creating these worlds and these scapes that live in your mind it's it's pretty awesome yeah and it's just you know i mean how privileged am i um you, you know how many people get to do what i'm doing uh, you know there's right. not a yeah. day that goes by that i don't think i'm lucky yeah. you know and i get like you no know, and like, you know i'm not saying this fell on my lap i've worked you know i'm 45 yeah. now i've worked really hard for this and i didn't you know i've only been professional full-time for eight years i think yeah. And so it, you know, it came later on. It's not like I wasn't doing it when I was a younger man. Um, but but still, I feel very privileged to be doing it, and mm -hmm. I'm not going to waste. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are days where I'm really stressed. I mean, I used to, like I say, I was a teacher for ten years, 
And I think I get more stressed being a comic book artist than I ever did as a teacher. And I was oh, dealing yeah. with people's lives then. Um, yeah. And it wasn't because I didn't care about them, because I did. But, you know, this job, it can be stressful. Um, because you want to put good stuff out. And yeah. You want to hit your deadlines. And you I don't want to say deadlines. Yeah. Deadlines. Um, well, and you're like, you know, you just said you're working on Aquaman, which you're doing with Ron V, right, by the way, who we, we've interviewed before. He's a great dude. Amazing. Yeah. Um, you're also like, you know, the stress is, uh, you know, I, I've never been, I mean, I have been a teacher I, in grad school, it's different because they weren't kids, but like, um, now you've also got like the, the control of this character that's been around, uh, you know, for so long, right? It, it, you know, has so much weight and so much um history piled on and so much so many expectations and like of course i mean that that kind of stress has, has got to be unimaginable but what are some of the of the, the pros of, of being able to like helm that kind of project i mean it, it, well, it, it's it the aquaman thing is interesting mm -hmm. because um i mean i'm not an aquaman fan and i think that's the key mm -hmm. you know and it's yeah. i mean i'm i mean i'm you know i'm a batman fan you know yeah. you know that's yeah, uh, that's the thing. <laughs> oh God, um, yeah. you know. Now to say I'm not an Aquaman fan doesn't mean I don't respect Aquaman, and it doesn't right. mean I don't see right. the, 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 you know, the, 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 you know, the quality of the character and what makes the character special. Because right. I wouldn't have done the book. Um, but the, the, there's a certain amount of freedom from that, mm -hmm. um, where I, 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 you know, it was, it became less personal and more about. For people who liked and loved Aquaman, it became more of a, it's become more of a performative thing where I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I want to, well, both me and Ram, it's, it's that whole thing of wanting to do, it's wanting to give people, it's not, it's wanting to not give people what they want, mm -hmm. but to give people something different that they will love more there's an, an, an and there's risk to that yeah but it's Some, that's something the, that they uh, don't want but something they don't know they need right exactly and, yeah. and there's an excitement to that because we're yeah. really i mean what i mean i can't I, I, you know it's not my story to give away and, and kind of ruin any of ram's surprises that he's kind of cooking up but I, i'll sort of like i can talk what's been revealed like right. when DC first approached me about Aquaman. The, the I think the the subject line, the the first line in the um the first paragraph was something like, "It's going to be Event Horizon with Aquaman." Oh, cool! Whoa, nice. Oh, that's that. What a uh, killer line! I just yeah. got chills thinking of yeah, Event Horizon. Man. That movie tripped me out, bro. Yeah. So it was, <laughs> you know, and and you know, it's. This is not the Aquaman you're expecting. And that's the beauty of working in Black Label mm -hmm. because all these characters, Batman, Aquaman, all of them, they're all flexible. And they, you know, mm -hmm. if we mess up and make a complete mess of it and Aquaman fans hate it, it'll be disappointing. It'll, you know, we won't kill the, kill the character. There'll be another Aquaman book. So you yeah. might as well take the shot and go for it. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Because like, totally. if you don't go for something and just make it yours and it goes back to what i was saying it's just about being true to you yeah uh, and you know and that's what ram does you know ram does his stories mm -hmm. where he he doesn't he doesn't do fan service necessarily he just mm -hmm. connects with that character and makes yeah. that kind of like he puts himself into that character and then kind of like navigates that character's mind rather than necessarily yeah. in the things in and I think that's why he's been as successful as he has because he's kind of yeah. subverted because he's not doing the fan service. He's doing the thing that people haven't expected. And, and yeah. he's doing that here. And, you know, I'm doing it with, with, with my stuff. Um, so it's been, it's, 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 it's cool. I'm really enjoying it. And, you know, the reason why I'm, um, I'm a comic book artist is because of, it's probably just about to sit up there, is um, Arkham Asylum. It's the oh, reason wow. why... This, yeah. that's uh, it's the reason why I'm a comic book artist you know I, I bought I got that book when I was I think I was 15 and I was doing my art exams at the time and it blew my mind um, yeah. just the idea that you could do you could tell a story in such a kind of evocative way and just exciting way um, 
And although my work is very different from McKean's, there's, I, I have the same sort of like trying to sort of stretch it and do different things and be true to my art within the story. And I think that's the, you know, I will always go back to that. It's just staying true to the story. Mm. Just as long as you're staying yeah. true to the story, it doesn't matter if you've drawn a wonky figure because people are just following the story. And yeah. they, they won't notice the figure. And if they do, then maybe they're not really connecting with the story. Yeah, that's um, right. That's interesting. Yeah, people people come for the art and they stick around for the story. So yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's really true. Um, and I think kind of you, you know, a, a good comic book artist isn't necessarily a good artist, or doesn't have to be a good artist. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to mention names here because it, it name it, names it feel like. <laughs> well, I'm not going to because it'll sound like I'm take, I'm like saying they're not good, and then, you know, no. but there are artists who who like. I mean, obviously, they become kind of really well known for a particular style, so it's hard to sort of separate it. But if you looked at it, on like, I mean, I know my like my mom kind of follows my career, and she's seen like some some like big artists post some of their art, and she's been like, "Oh, well, that's not very good, is it?" From a layman's point of view, yeah, yeah. Um, because she's not read the story and, and seen that it's not about the drawing, it's about the kind of like the mm. choice of shots, the way that they kind of connect yeah. that really intangible thing that you just emotionally connect with a character because they've yeah. just done the, a gesture just, just you know, blows your mind. I mean, one of my favourite artists is um, this guy here. Um, I never know how to say his name. Vivis, have you read this? Oh, oh no. yeah. That's man. Yeah, oh, it's in, like his stuff. He's a French artist. Is that the is that the one with the uh, Richard Aldonado? The, or the that's it. Richard yeah. Aldonado. Yeah, that's it. and like his stuff's really sketchy and like kind of really like. And like, oh, sometimes yeah. he'll, yeah, sometimes he'll just like does the most incredible fight sequences, and then yeah, sometimes you, he'll draw yeah. a, face, a character, and there's no face on it. Like yeah. he'll just like that. There's no face on this character, and like, yeah. I mean, of course, I'm, I'm looking for an example and can't find one for the love of love of anything he's, right now. He's more focused uh, on like the direction of the fist to the face than the, yeah. than the face itself. But it's he, it's weird. Like he'll have, have like a face, and it'll just be, have like a line for the nose. Yeah, yeah. And you, you see that in it. manga a lot. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But it's strange because you look at it, and maybe the character's feeling kind of soulful and and like introspective or something, and somehow there's this weird thing where you're like. Yeah, it does. It does look soulful and interesting. And I don't know how. It's a weird, strange magic. There's someone's much yeah. smarter than me that will understand why we make these weird leaps uh, and how it books. But that's that's always the way that I try I try and remind myself when I'm feeling down that I, like my drawing's not quite as tight as I might like or might not as flash as I like or maybe not as detailed as I would like. Yeah. I remember that it's always about the acting, the drama, and the story and as long as that that carries on you know that's all you can do yeah i remember some reading the, some, go oh, I, I remember reading Sorry. electra assassin for the first time and bill sinkevich is one of the legends but you know some of his panels are just um like thick brush strokes with a lot of texture and then maybe an eye and you know it's one of those things where you look at and you're like outside of the context of this book and sort of what you're yes. reading you're like i could have i could have done that you know like i could have yeah, made a exactly. But um, yeah, I mean that that whole panel where there's like a you know a single like red uh, brush stroke with all the, the grid of, of paints sort of digitally imposed on it, and then like one eyeball which is sort of crudely drawn, you know that there's a mood there, and that, and that that's going to fit the panel, right? Or it's going to be the transition yeah. to the next. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. And it's confident. It, it, it's having that confidence, you know. When yeah. I, back when I used to be a school teacher, that there, there was a whole thing that you know. You know, part of the way art's taught in, in the UK is there's a lot of kind of art history and kind of contextual stuff. Hmm. And, and, you know, and I was never like into just looking at the old masters. I always really wanted the kids to kind of look at a cross section from, yes, the old masters to right. contemporary art, to illustration, to whatever. And I, I always had a little bit where I like look at kind of like, you know, more kind of um, conceptual and, and like, you know, you know, a pile of bricks on the floor. 
and like mm. the kids would be like, oh, you know, they're East End kids from you know East End London, you know, part of the books on the floor was what like a pile of shit to them, and and, and it was, <laughs> you know, and and having to explain to them in a way that they understood and they connected with why, you know, and some of that art is not good, like any art, but some yeah, of sure. it is, um, and it, it's 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 explaining to them well what, why is that good and why does that connect and what, what what story does that tell because all art is about story whether you whether you know it or whether the artist thinks it or not it's all about story and it's all about connecting with people on an emotional level whether it be music painting tv comics whatever yeah. It's all about connection and that's all we want to do we want to connect as humans and we all want to feel something and and the art is the thing that connects us it's what strings us three together it's what strings all our friends together you know every friend will have something that will connect them Mm -hmm. and it's trying to understand that what that magic is and what that communication of story and mood and and like discussion and whatever that conversation is it, it's such an intangible thing. And when we talk about Sinkovich and some of the stuff he did, like the whole, like kind of that one character that's just like a photocopied face over mm-hmm. and over, it never changes. Yeah. And yet, and yet the character's mood and emotion change. And you feel that. Why? Yeah. It's the same face. Yeah. What is happening? What, what is that magic that's just, you know, you're, and, you know, I, I'm miles away from Sinkovich. You know, he's got a, confidence and grasp on 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 you know the 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 kind of the life-changing qualities of art and how it can connect with people and i'm just like an amateur trying to learn and trying to sort of like throw everything out there and and you know sometimes i'll hit the target and sometimes it'll do it and sometimes it won't but i've just got to keep yeah. doing it i gotta jump in i'm not gonna That's let my... you i'm not gonna let you do this to yourself you are not miles away from Bill and cabbage and you are not well, an amateur you are excellent anybody watching that well, is humility and it's great uh, compared to saying yeah. Okay, all right. I, yeah i was gonna say too that you know I've, I've heard in a couple interviews i think older ones that uh especially at the beginning of your comic career there was quite a bit of imposter syndrome you were feeling oh, like yeah. like and how how is that how is that going how's your how's your imposter syndrome these days is it getting I better? That. I mean, I you're still, yeah, yeah, you're no, no, only, uh, yeah, you're doing good. Okay. Good. Yeah, no, I'm no, on no, the no, inner I circle have. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we got three. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no big deal. Um, you know, what, no you know what? This but is you know what, just stretch and point. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it's funny because um, when I did Black Bolt, which was like my first really kind of mainstream work. Yeah. Um, Olive, my young, my eldest had just been born. We yeah. moved house like twice because I we moved out of London. We used to, me and Catherine used to live in this really. It was it was a bed set. It was one room, and we moved out of that. And I, we had moved in with my mom and dad, as you do. I mean, we were like I was forty then, so God. Uh, I had to move in with my mom and dad while we kind of like saved a bit of money to buy a house. We don't live in London now. We live in this place called Shrewsbury, which is much cheaper. <laughs> and uh, in the middle of that, I got offered this Black Bolt book, which I was like, you know, I thought I've got to do this. You know, I've got to have a go at doing a Marvel book. And uh, and then we had Olive. And it was a really stressful time because I don't know if you guys are parents, but, you know, you don't sleep much. It's stressful. It's, you know, you know, um, yeah. it's wonderful and tiring and it doesn't leave a lot of time for anything else and suddenly I had this gig this Marvel gig and you do this thing when you're a comic book artist I imagine this applies to other artistry where you think oh well it's superheroes it's Marvel it's the big two but that must mean I've made it uh, and because you don't have the confidence, and as you've kind of pointed, you had you're, you're like this imposter. You think, well, maybe if I do this, I'll be in the inner circle because that's yeah. that's the holy grail. Doing the Marvel book, doing the DC book, doing the right. big two. I mean, like Aquaman, I, I never read a, um, a Black Bolt or any humans book. I mean, I knew yeah. from kind of like Kirby, but I, I never read anything. Yeah, and it it was really stressful 
I, I didn't know what I was doing. It, it felt like I was out of my depth. Um, I wasn't sure if people were digging it because it wasn't a Marvel yeah. style. Yeah, I, I was it, a subscriber to that book. I, I, oh, I, I got a little tear in my eye when uh, Absorbing Man, you know, oh. met his... Oh, spoiler! Yeah, that, oh. Hey, I didn't say what happened to him. The, the progression it's of the characters, mother. like the storytelling. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah, Absorbing mom. mom, Mrs. Yeah. Flannel. Um, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, just that, that story resonated greatly with me, and it, and it certainly put me on the lookout for more of, more of your stuff. Yeah, but also Saladin. I mean, he was just like, oh my and, god, and because he and because he yeah. was like an outsider as well coming in. It was just, we were yeah. both doing something. We didn't know how to do a superhero comic. Yeah, it was. We only knew how to do our comics. But like yeah. winning that Eisner, it did something to me because it was suddenly like, oh, because there's some narcissism in in being. I'm an imposter, I'm an outsider, I'm not very good, I don't mm -hmm. fit in. There's a bit of like kind of, and, and, and it was that realization that how I feel about my work is nothing to do with me. And it's, it's I've got to take myself out of it because yeah. it's a job. Yes, one that I put my heart and soul into, but it is a job and it's about the audience. Mm -hmm. end of it's about the audience right. so by me being i'm an imposter i'm not very good and that's not the same thing as saying there are things what i'm good at not so good at that's fine that's growth as an artist right. but if i'm saying i'm an imposter i don't deserve to be in this industry i don't deserve to be a comic book creator that's kind of like me saying f you to any fans because it's just like yeah it's that yeah. it's that whole thing of like if you can't love yourself, how's anyone else going to love you? And so it became about, it's, it's, it's about, I trust if people like my stuff and people buy my stuff and guys like you say, you really like my stuff. Then I'm like, I just think it's not that that voice isn't there, but I just sure. lock it in the door. Sure. I just close it down. And I'm like, I trust you guys. I trust the people who like my stuff on Twitter. And that's not to say that everyone's going to like my stuff because it's art. Some people like it. Some people hate it. That's absolutely fine. I get good reviews. I get bad reviews. Um, but as long as I get good, some good reviews uh, or, or majority of good reviews, then I'm just, I feel like I'm on the right track. And it's or, not, or an Eisner or three. Or three. Uh, <laughs> it's not. It's, Patrick. <laughs> it's not for me to wallow yeah. in those kind of self-destructive feelings of being an imposter because they they will you know they they kind of especially when you're on a deadline and there's a lot of artists that will tell you the these stories of like i mean i read one from um you know liam sharp mm -hmm. who was very public about one that he had with, with the hulk mm -hmm. and and even uh brian hitch put something up on Twitter today about his work on the Ultimates. And of course, from the outsider, you're just seeing what you think is a seminal piece of work. Yeah, right. um, and they're both, I mean, particularly Brian is, is, you know, I don't know him, but I'm just implying what I think based on what he says on his Twitter. Yeah. Seems to be in a much more happy place with his work because he's kind of accepted it and yeah. just does work for the love of it. And he has his fans and they love it and it's it's all dandy, you know. And, and you're just like, well, if only you'd been like that back then, yeah. Why put yourself through that torment? Um yeah. so I just feel like you know, comics isn't the Olympics. You don't have to worry about being first. Yeah. You don't have to worry about someone being better than you, because there is someone better than you. Right. But there's always gonna be somebody not as good as you. And, that, and it, it, you know, your career will go up. It will go down, you know, someone yeah. else will go up and down. It's it's just like you just you've just got to go with it and just like as long as people like my stuff, it's it's not for me, as much as it sounds like a weird thing to say, it's not for me to kind of like not trust that. You know? Yeah, like it's, I had, it's exhausting being a self-loathing artist. It it's is. exhausting being a fan of a self-loathing artist because yes, you, you love is. their stuff. Yeah, you love yeah. that stuff, and then you hear them in an interview talking about your favorite work they've done, and they're like, "Oh, that's, they that's shit trash. All over that's it. rubbish." Like, yeah, yeah, yeah it breaks my heart. I will, I will like 
I hate my first book. I'll stay on that one. <laughs> <laughs> the one that shall not be named. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, I was worried that it was um, Machine Gun Wizards. Uh, uh, is, that wasn't it, right? No. no okay, good. Because no, I was no, like, no. I love that. Oh, okay. no. <laughs> AKA uh, Tommy Gun Wizards, right? Shelf. Wasn't it wasn't the wasn't the story originally named Tommy Gun Wizards? Yeah. <laughs> Ran into a, <laughs> a thing there. Like, we, no. were, we, we were talking about it before we started the interview, and, and Crow and I like Machine Gun Wizards a lot. Like the like the title change. Oh yeah, no, it was yeah. uh, that was that was Daniel Shabon that kind of came up with the solution. Yeah. Um yeah, it's it's fine. It's fine. It, it's it's gotta be difficult to to have your first title out and hit that just sort of roadblock. In your momentum yeah i mean i've, I mean, got, it I've with, got to kind of talk around it uh um, yeah, yeah yeah but it, yeah i mean i mean it, it's happened to a few other books like uh what was it dead rabbit you know got yeah. sued by a bar on the east coast and had to st- like completely change the name of the book and it killed it's, the it's, release it, schedule it, it kind of you know it does it takes you you know takes you out of it <laughs> you, 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 i i don't make comics to make money yeah you know no, I mean? yeah 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 i mean look I, you know i'm we're very fortunate that Catherine doesn't work. She's a stay-at-home mom, you know, and I do, you know, I do well, um, you know, well enough to pay the mortgage and stuff. So I'm not being flippant. I need to make money with the comics, of course. But, but I don't right. go into it. Particularly like, you know, you know, the day job is the ones that I draw sort of thing. So right. the, that's the day job. That's the one that pays the mortgage and the bills. Yeah. Uh, and then the ones that I write because I'm earning money on the, 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 you know, the, the right. DC. I can afford to be a bit more I don't need to worry I don't need to create it to make money and yeah. I think that's um that's a good way to be I mean I remember when I first moved to London for two years I used to work in a store called Hamleys I don't know whether you do you know, do you know Hamleys it's Not quite a familiar it's quite a, it's quite a world famous store um but it may not it might be like a Europe Came store rather than a world. But it, it, it's basically it's the oldest toy store in Europe, Ooh, um, cool. and it's 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 a massive. Um, it's in London. It's on Regent Street, and I think it's it's like six stories high. Toys. I have yeah. been in. I have been in this store. I forgot the name. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a it's a big toy shop. Um, and um, I used to work. In, I I got a job in this store, and it's like. Like it has like a Disneyland vibe to it, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. People are kind yeah. of like doing juggling and blowing bubbles, and, and there's people in costumes. I used to be a six foot teddy bear. We won't go. We won't talk about that. Uh, <laughs> and, um, I always remember they um, the when I first got the job, the ethos from the then owners slash managers was, "Do not sell, have fun." Because oh, wow. if you have fun people will buy yep. and then it, it got sold in the midst of me working there and it was sell 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 and i don't need to tell you which one of those made the most sales right and, and storytelling in comics is exactly the same thing and not i mean sometimes you're not fortunate enough that you can be you can create a book that risks being a failure because if you know that's the book you've you've got you got to try and make it work but because i because the all the eggs aren't in that basket i can just make a book with love with with a love of the story with a you know a a genuine thing that i want to say uh working with people i really want to work with um so it, it's you know going back to that it wasn't about making money right it was about telling a very cool story but that just took the wind out of my sails completely. Yeah, man that's I a bet. shame and it's I, a shame because that whole that universe was like it was it was the plan was to go to like 12 issues well like good was good, good for you for continuing it i mean i know that you know someone well with... i had to finish the story i couldn't like leave yeah. it completely empty you know yeah um, and it, and it's not just me, right? A comics is a team, you know. I, it's right. Sammy as well, the co-creator. It's not, you know. It's I can't just pull the plug. It's you know. It's, right. it's us. It's not me. Right. Right. If well, you hear my dog snoring. I don't know if no. you can. Let me just kind of turn around <laughs> and you'll see. Let's see. There we. Can you see? There he is. is what he a just, prince! Uh, is he just just hanging out with you all day every day? Yeah. That he's, spot? That's his, that's his, that's his, that was supposed to be my reading chair. 
Um, wait, wait, wait. And, uh, yeah. I will be around before you look at all the rubbish on the floor. That's okay. We, look at uh, all the rubbish in my uh, my comic room. <laughs> I'm in the office, so my 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 house is a is a hobble. Um, so we're we're hitting about uh, an hour here, and I obviously I don't want to stop any good conversation, but I just want to be respectful of your time. I know you were um, oh, taking care of some family matters. Okay, cool. Um, I'm the more than bad. Oh, good, yeah. great. I, I I did have uh, I did have one thing I wanted to ask you a little bit about just also because I'm very unfamiliar with it I heard about it when it started and uh, planned to get into it during the pandemic but you know life gets in the way um, the three worlds three moon stuff on Substack mm -hmm. are you currently working on Substack content? No, I'm not. You're not? Okay. I mean, I, it's it's um that was more to do with um I mean I, I I've not really explored it. I mean, I, okay, I, so I, we're kind of in the same boat. Then. Yeah, I've joined two. I mean, I got one comp. Like, I know yeah. Jane, James uh, Tyne in the fourth quite well, and he comped me his, who just gave yeah. me. And then I actually bought Hickman's one. Um, okay. Just because I was quite curious. I was just like, I'll get yeah. one, and then I can kind of just see what it's like. And it, it's, it's, I mean, I'm, if I'm, I, I've not really. I tend to just ignore the emails, not ignore the ball. They, they go to spam and Gmail. I mean, yeah, you got to pull them out. It's, it's check an them interesting out. thing, yeah. but yeah. I, I don't know if it's necessarily working necessarily for me. And I don't see a lot of chatter about it, which is weird. Yeah. They, you're talking yeah, it is like strange. Top, top kind of like creative. But, yeah. but that that book was that that short that I did. And I mean, that was for, I mean. It was, Taking the Substack thing out there and just looking at the content, the, the, yeah. it, was, it was a great script. Me and John, um, I say John like a good friend, we know each other a little bit, but me and John, um, we started at the same time. So when I did Olympus, mm. uh, he did uh, The Nightly News. It was like at the same time. Uh, oh, yeah. And, uh, or, you know, so it was like... Um, I send him like kind of PDFs of, of Olympus. Yeah. And he would send me like kind of like nightly news. Cool. And we used to chat on an uh, initial date. We used to chat on AIM, you know, instant message. Oh, yeah. Maybe it was Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, we used to chat on that. And uh, and we, we we got on. We, we obviously had a similar sensibility to wanting to do comics. Um, that didn't look like normal comics and push boundaries. And again, I think oh, his really. came from the fact that he wasn't a natural drawer, so he used his graphic design sense of, you know, skills to tell mm, stories. Yeah. It's um, a great effect. Yeah, um, incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I would, I mean, his stuff, you know, the, his, the latest of the X-Men stuff just been, has been, you know. His iconography was, is just incredible. I see incredible. a lot of that in your work too. Yeah. Yep. But so, like, and we, what we were going to do, we were going to work together. And he, he's, and he was like, I don't think you should work with me next mm. because he was worried that people would think that because we had a kind of similar way of working, he was worried that if I worked with him, people would think that he was doing part of what I was doing. Right. And he didn't want to sort of take any ownership of, of what I was doing. So he was just like, well, let's just leave it. And then we'll, you know, you you can kind of because I think he'd done a few books at this point, so he, he came out in quite a quick procession. Um, so he, he was like, "You go off and do another book," because I was teaching at the time, so I wasn't producing books quite as prolifically as I am now. Um, and obviously, so I went off. I did uh, Infinite Vacation with Nick, and um, and then we just kind of lost touch. He kind of got all the the started doing Avengers at. Um, and Fantastic Four and Avengers at uh, Marvel, and then obviously massively blew up. Yeah. And then we we hadn't spoken for or emailed or anything for years. Had a very brief kind of said hello at a convention once, um, but then like he emailed and just said, "We've got this Substack thing, and I've got like an eight page um, short, and I've always wanted to work with him. I think he's <laughs> incredible as a writer." Yeah, so it was it was just a no brainer. The Substack thing was neither here nor there. It was um, it was a no brainer just to like yeah, I want to work with you. Yeah, um, yeah. to see what we would do, and it was it was really good fun. Yeah, um, I, 
I want to consume all the content on Substack. I, I almost feel like just with how many platforms there are to manage that the platform itself is sort of an obstacle in getting that content mm -hmm. unlocked. Uh, but again, I, I really haven't dug into it too deep. I may be making a mountain out of a molehill. Um, yeah, I mean, I, and I think I'm the same. Um, yeah. It's, it's, you know, I mean, I will also say that, you know, I've got a massive pile of physical comics that I haven't read. My comicsology um, has got like countless yeah. comics there that right. I haven't read. You know, it's not, the Substack thing is, it's not necessarily, it's not unique to my current right. like, kind of reading platform it's not like i'm reading a bunch of books elsewhere you know yeah. I, I read a lot of first issues get very excited about them and say this is the one i'm going to carry on reading i uh, just you know don't have the time um, um which is a shame because i love comics um, yeah what, it's hard to what, it's hard to, you, you see so many how, how do you kevin kevin has a stack of comics that is wait a second i'll show you just do it this is like what this he picked up. This is my up. latest delivery from my comic book store. So it how many it? weeks is that? Uh, eight. Okay, that's all right. I was, I <laughs> like two, I was like, Jesus. It's like 130, I had 135. I left a few wow. magazine sizes there, but I have my comic shipped from the shop I used to work at. So I'm always a little behind on reading and then that translates into very behind on reading. So yeah. I feel your pain. I, I yeah. can't even, Kevin, Kevin used to work at a comic book shop and it, I can't, there's stuff that we'll be talking and I'm sure you're this way too. I, I, I am a more casual of a comic book reader. Um, you know, I can, I, I, may, I might knock out like a trade a week, you know, maybe two if I'm really into something. Uh, but Kevin w reads that quickly. <laughs> it's an insane. Yeah. Of comic well, well, my job, you know, the job, you got the comics in on Tuesday, you got to get them out and ready for the shelves on Wednesday. And in order to be able to sell them, you got to get excited about them between Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah. So my evenings were essentially me staying up till 1 or 2 a.m. reading Every not comic. just my 30 <laughs> books in my pull list, but grabbing 20 more from the rack to read just so that I could talk about them. Yeah. And I've just developed this way of, I don't even know if I call it speed reading, but I'm able to go through comics very quickly and retain and enjoy the art and Fantastic. talk about it yeah. um but it yeah i think i overestimate my abilities now that i'm looking down the barrel of like you know a thousand <laughs> comics that i've got to get through to catch up on where everything's at so yeah. well we've got a uh, we've got uh i've got about 10 minutes left that i can be on um so why don't we go through some like rapid yeah. fire stuff some more some more lighthearted, um mm -hmm. some sure. some like Lightning, the lightning round i guess they call it in you know sure. cliche universe they don't okay. um what are you reading right now I mean, nothing. You're reading. We covered that. What's the what's, I mean, like, what's the top of your got, pile? I'll, tell you what, I'll pick. I'll pick up what's what's in front of me. Then this is like so. Oh, I was just oh, going to ask you because you that, mentioned Tiny Onion a little earlier. Yeah, Night House on the Lake is probably my favorite. I mean, that, pile first, out. that first issue. My God. I mean, my god it was it's just nice incredible like, yeah. I, like here's the thing like Catherine, my wife she, my wife she um she doesn't she's not a comic book reader she loves reading she yeah. read, you know novels and non-fiction she's a big reader but she's not necessarily a comic book reader but there'll be i will give her certain comics to read mm -hmm. And because she's, you know, she's she's open to it and she kind of supports me in my industry and stuff and she's she shows an interest. So if I say to her, okay, this is there'll be, you know, this is one that you can read and you'll like, and I know when she reads this, she will love it. Oh, yeah. uh, and I think that's my like when I pick read something that I'm like, my Catherine will love this. Mm -hmm. That's when I know it's special, when it breaks out of just comic yeah. readers it. and actually james's stuff does that a lot i mean i would say the same thing yeah. about um uh, something's killing the children i mean oh, that, oh my that, god just just incredible yeah. um i mean we we've been talking about maybe working together i'd love to work with james oh my oh, god I would, that would be see, i would love to see killer. an opinion word i mean we, we, there, there's an idea but i just it's yeah. it, it, it's just timing it's just timing yeah i mean Right now, and he knows as we've been talking right now, a, a big, a big kind of drive for me is I've got to make a decision that now that I'm writing, do I do I stick to create our own stuff 
at least for a time where I'm just the writer so mm. that I'm becoming this this thing. I mean, I will always want to work with other writers. That will always right. be, as I said before, like, I genuinely think there's a magic that can happen there. But I mm. don't know. I've got to make a decision what I want to do after Aquaman if I want to do something where I'm yeah just me you know uh no. or whatever I, and, it, and it goes back to the gamble it's almost like the gamble of like you know when I left teaching the gamble right. of taking that leap of faith um yeah. it, again it'll be the leap of faith of okay is this it now am I just gonna am I gonna just do me I think, we'll you know, from a fan's perspective, just just reading the one issue of uh, Bloodstained Teeth, I mean, you're 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 well on your way, man, to becoming a, a writer, a writer artist instead of an artist writer. Like the, well, the storytelling especially... was great. It felt very, very well. It just nailed the noir vibe. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, I'd love to see more stuff like that from you. Yeah. Especially with the I mean, stuff getting it's... optioned nowadays, like Bloodstained Teeth just feels like yeah. it's it's wet. It feels like it's one of those things that, you know, somebody's going to be like, well, something killing you, something got picked up. We, you know, we're getting all these sort of gothic comic books. Um, oh, but St. Teeth is vampires. Oh, shit. We love vampires. <laughs> I mean, you know. But, yeah. yeah. And it's, you know, and it's vampires with a difference. Right. Mm-hmm. It's vampires with a difference. Not a typical, this is not a typical vampire thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, this goes back to like, I, I haven't done this as a film or TV show or whatever. I've done it as a comic. But you are absolutely right. You know, it, it's that allows a comic to continue sometimes. Um, right. I mean, I think a lot of people outside of, of either industry kind of think if a comic gets turned into a film or a TV show, um, you're made you, you, and you're not. Um, yeah. You know, we're not talking about the sort of money that, you know, you're talking a very small fraction of right. the money that these films or TV shows Right. end of making and there's a you know so it, it's it's amazing it's great um yeah. it's you know it's it's certainly it's not you know it's not a little about money but it's not it's not life-changing but right. Right. it does allow you the freedom to carry on making and creating and it's you know it's a a year or two where you don't have to worry about you know making something for money you can keep making something for love um and i would have yeah I would yeah. imagine that it gives the publishers, you know, a lot more confidence in new story yeah. pitches and stuff like that. If you've dem- demonstrated that your stuff yeah. presents well in a variety of formats. I mean, the the irony for Bloodstained Teeth, I don't know if it is ironic, but the, the, the funny thing about it is it's it's pre-ordered more than any other book I've done. Whoa, cool. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah, nice. More than Odyssey, more than Invisible Kingdom, yeah. more than Blood Bolt. Wow, well, the timing, just... the timing's really good. You know, Philadelphia has just been just nothing but an upward trend for image. Right. You just had uh, Nita, Nita Ha's Nightmare blog come mm-hmm. out. So, like, so now's the time for vampires, you know? Yeah, I, there's I'm a house called that... Terror that just came out. They got little monsters. Yeah. You know, that's big. Jeff Lemire. Yeah, yeah I smashed it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's, it's funny. And, yeah, I've, I've had this idea for, like, two, three years, and it's just happened now. It. It's just the, yeah. the timing of it. The um, guys, man, you know, yeah, man, yeah, you're in it. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Next big question. So, you already told us about Arkham Asylum. One of our, one of our, whatever. Just, we're not some some huge monolith, but one of the questions we like to ask is like, if you're going to be on a desert island and you have a short box, which is what our company name is, um, what are the what are the stories that make it in? So, like, what are your what are three that would make it in for you? Oh, you got limited oh. space. Um, okay, um, Hellboy in Hell. Probably oh, there. yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. Unexpected, but awesome. Love it. No, I love um, it. Yeah. I've got a... Oh, awesome. Oh, shit. Tom Hellboy now. That's amazing. Um, what? Oh, what a cool... Oh, wow. So I'm a huge fan. Of being there. But again, it goes back to what we were saying about kind of, um, you know, being true to yourself. I mean, his stuff is just... No one's oh, like... Yeah. No, no, no. Yes. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I would... Okay. Um, we three... We three, Hellboy and Hell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. We'll leave Arkham Asylum out because obviously we've already talked about it. I, it's I, on the island. I, I, what, I, I'll go a little bit left field. It mm. might not be in my top three, but it's certainly a favourite comic and it might be one that would be un, unexpected. Have I got, have I got it? Um, I don't know, I don't know yeah. what We Three is. You don't know We Three? No, I'm, I'm, I'm a piece of shit, so it's okay. That's the... <laughs> 
That's the 300 one, right? Like about the no. soldiers? No, hang on. Oh, man, I know I had it. It was on this shelf somewhere, but I can't find it. Uh, we Free is, is Frank Quietly and Graham Wilson. Oh. About, um, um, oh, the, oh, oh yes. In a while. Yeah, the, 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 the while, cat, though. the dog. Yes. Yeah, and the rabbit. And they're kind of turned into cybernetic military mission that is just too phew. cool man yeah cool i mean i would cool. i mean in a way i would put that and and all-star superman in the same bracket probably and it Overcall. probably shifts, probably yeah. shifts between the two but that yeah. one probably edges out just a little bit and the other one the left field one which i really wish i oh no oh no there it is um this is one that a lot of people don't know so it'd be nice to give this a bit of a plug um is this one Hard time. Hard time. No, I'm not. Incredible. Who's so the writer? So good. Steve Gerber, the late Steve Gerber. Oh, RIP. Um, who, who, um, I, I don't, I don't really know. What did he do, Steve Gerber? I mean, he wrote Man Thing. It was a thing he was really known for. I think he, he, wrote, uh, he did Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck, of course. Howard the Duck. Yeah. That's the one he really knows. So yeah, Steve Gerber, this was um, this was from the early 2000 and DC started a new line of books and it was it was a counterpoint to um, Vertigo. So where Vertigo was the mm. magic fantasy stuff, they had a line that was supposed to be sci-fi. Mm. And this was one of the books that they launched with. And really, it was the only one that really hit. And then the line, unfortunately, kind of like crumbled. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and he didn't. This was planned to be a really big story. So the like the last, the last three issues are like squashed, mm. uh, and they're okay, they're okay. They're kind of like yeah. it, it finishes fine, but the first couple of arcs, it's just incredible. It's about a young boy who um, gets he his friend is a high school shooter. And he, and, but he's killed in the process of the shooting, and he ends up going down down for this high school shooting, even though he wasn't really involved, and he gets put into prison. Wow! So far, so like it within the realms of reality, and then for the first like issue or two, it's just this like, and he's and then because they want to make a, a symbol of him, they put him in an adult prison, and um, and then like on like the third night something like the second issue or something, he suddenly starts to astral project out oh. of the prison. <laughs> Whoa, and it's, okay. And it's wild. Yeah, it's, I'm going to check that and out. Like, and it's the sort of storytelling I really like and I really aspire to, where it doesn't really follow. It doesn't follow plot. It doesn't follow kind of like, you know, and then this happens and then this happens. What it does is it follows character. Yeah. Mm. Characters stay true to who they are and, and the and their relationships and connections follow and then and then and because of that it goes to places because none of us are simple, you know. And if I go back to Atticus Sloan from Bloodstained Teeth, he will contradict he contradicts himself like three times in the first issue. And mm. that's not because I'm writing it and I don't know what he's thinking, it's because he doesn't know what he's thinking. Right. People don't. Uh, and people are messy and they contradict themselves and they, they change their minds and they do things that are self-destructive. And that's what's really, really good about this book. Everyone feels like a real character. Everyone wants something. Some of those things that the people want are, are obvious. Some of them are, are not. And that they create conflicts. They create weird alliances. They, they create yeah. genuine friendships. It's, it's a really, it's such a good book. I mean, I mean, this is quite a recent. Actually, I mean, you can see it's it's black label that they mm -hmm. put oh, it out. Oh, they reprinted it. Okay. Oh, neat. Yeah, it's the, it's the whole thing. Um, I love this. Really, really love it. I think it's a great book. Um, so that that would that would be my third. Fourth might be Twentieth Century Boys if we want to go a oh, bit yeah. more. Twentieth Century Boys is great. I think um, that's the. I think that might be the most surprising short boxed list that we've yeah. had. No, that's great. The, uh, yeah. Two of those, I'm going to have to go back and reread just, nice. just based off of their appearance on the show today. Well, I'm glad you said All Star Superman. I'm a Superman nerd, and I, I don't think that book gets the respect it deserves in the mainstream. But. No, it's it's phenomenal. The it's best so Superman book. Joy, oh, by far. By far. Like yeah. I, I mean, this sounds awful, but I gave up reading Superman after that. 
Because I was like, no point now. <laughs> well, why would I? Yeah. There's no uh, I mean, there's been some great stories, you know, storytellers and kind of artists and stuff. And I yeah. dip my toe in every now and again. Like, I really like what um, Philip Kennedy's doing at the moment. I think mm-hmm. I'm really enjoying that run. Um, I mean, I am sort of still reading, but that's that's, that's my, um, that's just unsurpassed. And I'm sure a lot of kind of people who write Superman probably feel the same way. In the same yeah. way that you look at like year one or Dark Knight Returns and be like, well, that's the pinnacle. Right. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, I think that the, the, the difficulty with Superman, as opposed to Batman, Batman can be quite flexible mm-hmm. in the way that he, he can be the gritty noir, or he can be the long-eared, kind of creepy, you know, slightly yeah. mythical. Mm-hmm. Where with Superman, it's like, really, it's just that core yeah, good man. You yeah, know? is he going to have a mullet or a, or a curl? I mean, that's about... Yeah, his, cha- his changes are his hair... <laughs> The yeah, S yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still like it doesn't, you know, black it's just costume, blue costume, you know, yeah, you know, a, a rose by any other name, right? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Exactly. Is that the point? A rose yeah. by any other name is just, smells just as sweet, you know. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wish we'd um, have asked you Superman questions earlier. Uh, I nobody ever wants to talk Superman with me because everybody's a fan. We'll just do it. We'll just do a round two at some no. future, future. Yeah, no, do it. Let's do it. No, yeah, if you're up for it, we would cool. love to, of course. Yeah. 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 All right, everybody. I think we're going to say goodbye for now. Um, So that way, uh, uh, Christian, get to bed, even though you just... um, uh, uh, I've got to go back to work now. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, I guess his last... What are you you working on tonight? Uh, Tonight, uh, I am... I've got... uh, I've got an Aquaman on page. I'm hoping to finish. Um, um, Yeah, should be able to get done tonight. And I'm also working on a cover for issue... Six of Bloodstained Teeth, which will also be the cover for the second trade. Um, awesome. So I'm doing that as well. Awesome. And then um, we can find you on Twitter. And where else can we find you? Uh, Twitter and Instagram are my main two. Uh, it's the same handle. So it's at CJ Ward Art. So it's the same handle on both Twitter and, and Instagram. Awesome. All right. Feel free to harass uh, Christian on those platforms about any answers. Uh, that he might have given here are the answers that he didn't give. And if you're the artist that he wouldn't <laughs> name, but you know who you are, well, you've got a bone to pick and now you know where to find it. All right. Thanks, everybody. This is Shortbox Interviews. We'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks, Christian. You're welcome.